Hi, and welcome to Lynn Reads a Book. Today, I am going to interview Stephanie Feldman. Stephanie is the author of the novel, The Angel of Losses, a Barnes and Noble Discover Great New Writers selection, winner of the Crawford Fantasy Award, and also the co-editor of the multi-genre anthology, Who Will Speak for America. Today, we're gonna to talk to Stephanie about some of her previous publications, what she's doing now, and about a few other things she's doing. So let's welcome Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Lynn, thanks for having me. It's nice to see you. You know, I, I remember the first time we met at Elsie's Cafe in Glenside. Do you remember that? Yeah, and you were writing for the Inquirer. Yes, back when the Inquirer had freelancers <laughs> and had a book yeah. editor and all that great stuff. And I remember you were telling me how your dream was to open a bookstore and... Um... Really? Oh, nice. Oh, and I don't even have mine. I love, thank you. I love your mug. Thanks for the plug. Yeah. Thanks for the plug. So um, what have you been up to these days of isolation? Yeah, well, we've been in... I mean, not complete isolation, but as much isolation as possible, except for yeah. occasional grocery shopping for the last two weeks. Yes. Um, though it, it feels a lot longer. I know. So, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're just trying to establish a new routine and what it means to work from home and to uh, school at home as much as possible. Yeah. And um, try to keep our spirits up when we're yeah. not feeling great and um, because we think it'll probably be, uh, you know, weeks yeah. more of this. Yeah. Well, you mentioned when we spoke the last time that you've been keeping your spirits up by reading Toni Morrison. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about what you've been reading. Well, um, it's funny now, the book is underneath a stack of books that the laptop <laughs> is on top of, so I can't show you, but um, okay. it's a, I borrowed it from the library, so now I have it forever. Um, <laughs> But her, no yeah, I know. Her her last book, I guess, which is called The Source of Self Regard, and it's a collection of her nonfiction. Um, I had been reading that and will continue to read it. And there are so many I, it was it's amazing to read pieces she wrote in the seventies and the eighties and nineties that feel so current and essential um, to this moment, to crisis and to injustice. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's such an inspiration because she really uh, showed what it means to be an activist and a writer. And she was an inspiration for um, the new Writers Resist event, which was supposed to happen tomorrow. Can you uh, tell me about the Writers Resist movement? Yeah. And you were involved in starting that, weren't you? Uh, here in Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. So back in the fall of 2016, after the election, um, Aaron Ballou and Keith Kopka and some other Poets started Writers Resist, and that was a national movement um, bringing people together for a literary day of protest right before the inauguration. Okay. So people in different cities, actually over 80 cities, organized their own events. And here in Philadelphia, we really focused on um, our history as a city, as um, you know, where American democracy was formed, yeah. and we read. We had over 30 writers come together to read all kinds of texts from... Was, that was an inspiring event. It was a, yes, thank <laughs> you. It was a really great event. We had hundreds of people come, which is pretty yep. good for literary reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we had this idea, actually Herman Beavers at Penn, who's a poet, had this idea that we needed to come together again to honor Toni Morrison. And the national folks got involved and we started planning um, Write the Vote. And um, that will take place in the fall. Good. Yes. So we haven't picked a date yet, but sometime in uh, September, we think. And we just wanted to invite people once again to assemble and to talk about what it means to be a writer in times like this and how we can stand up for our values and stand up for each other. Um, it's apolitical, but we're focusing on uh, voting access, voting awareness, voter registration, and um, yeah, taking the lead from Toni Morrison. So here in Philadelphia, we're planning to have all of our readers read either Toni Morrison texts or texts that were inspired by her. Beautiful. Yeah. And you also did an anthology that came out of this work, right? Yes, we did. 
Um, it's actually, it's right above my head. There's a tiny little picture of it. I know, I love your art. It's beautiful. Show us all your book covers. <laughs> yeah, so when, uh, this is where I, I write. I also write, you know, at the kitchen table and wherever. Wherever you can, yeah. But sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I look up here and I think, well, I can still fool some people anyway. <laughs> this is okay. for America. Is it backwards? No, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks backwards to you. It looks backwards to me. Yeah, this is an anthology that Nathaniel Popkin and I put together of um, poets, fiction writers, essayists, visual artists, people talking about what American identity means to them. Uh, and that came out in 2018. Very timely material. And over your shoulders, I see the hardcover and the paperback <laughs> covers of The Angel of Losses. Yes, sort of. Can you tell us about The Angel of Losses? Yeah, that was my debut novel. It came out in 2014, which also feels like ages ago. And it's a story about two sisters and um, what happens when they rediscover their grandfather's, uh, their late grandfather's notebooks, which contain some dark fairy tales um, and clues to his past, which he had kept hidden. And we start trying to figure out, one of them does, figure out where these stories came from and what they mean. And they learn a whole lot about their family and a whole lot about each other. And yeah. Well, there are two themes that really stand out to me in that book. One of them is Judaism. And the other is the sort of the magic realism that you do. So do you, do you identify as a Jewish writer? Do you think that book is a, fits into that category or it's just part of the whole story? It's funny, I, I kind of, when I sit down to write, I, I'm not thinking usually about my identity. Okay. Um, you know, in this case, I was drawing on things that I know, so it's related. But at the same time, you know, if you want to ask me, you know, are you a woman writer? Are you a Jewish writer? Are you a Philadelphia writer? You know, all of these things. Right. And um, I think our identities are complicated. And um, they certainly are. Yeah, in great ways. So I, I bring all of that to my work, but uh, not always consciously, I guess. Okay. Now, um, you said something about fable and how meaning can be valued over historical accuracy in terms of the folklore and the fables that you include in the Angel of Losses. Um, can you speak a little bit about that and about this thread that I'm calling magic realism. I don't know if you see it that way. Sure. Well, I think, um, you know, I didn't come up with this. You've probably heard this before too, but in fiction, you know, you're trying to get to the truth, even right. if you have to put facts aside. Okay. And, you know, if you look at stories that people have told, legends, um, folklore, fables, mythology, um, even just the stories that we tell each other and we tell ourselves, there's a lot of meaning embedded in that. And it can tell you about the things that um, we're frightened of, the things that we care about, uh, the things that we carry with us. So I think there's a lot of um, truth to be found in all of those different kinds of stories. Okay. And after the Angel of Losses, have you, have you I understand, been doing some science fiction writing? Yeah, well, I've been writing more short fiction and it all, it, not science fiction really, but more, I guess, magical kind of writing fantasy fantasy adjacent uh i like fantasy adjacent story. is that yeah. a term <laughs> no i made it i just made it up i like it yeah um <laughs> she coined it here i coined it here i i guess because once again it's not something that i think of when i'm writing i have a lot of um like weird ideas <laughs> okay <laughs> and i just like to um follow them wherever they go so I've had um, pieces published in fantasy magazines and science fiction magazines. And, um, you know, I'm thrilled and I'm happy to have writer, uh, readers in every genre. And I love writers in every genre. I don't always know which one I fall into. Okay. You know, I often think of The Angel of Losses as a ghost story because it's about the past and about uh, being haunted, you know, literally and figuratively. Okay. So I think I've always sort of worked in this realm that plays around with reality a little bit. Okay. But you're not interested in genres or pigeonholing yourself. You just follow your ideas where they take you. Yeah. And not because I have any, like, problem with, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem with pigeonholing myself. I just don't know 
where I fit in. Right. Um, sometimes other people don't know where I fit in, but I think that's, uh, those are some of my favorite writers. We were just talking about Karen Russell and I think she, you know, yes. jumps across genres in the same way. And I think it's, it's an amazing that. talent you have to do that. That's really great. It's great. Well, I look forward to seeing what you publish next. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you are available to Skype into book clubs who want to talk about the Angel of Losses or? Yes, yes. Um, I've visited many book clubs for the Angel of Losses and it's always so much fun to talk to readers. And there's a lot of things to talk about. I find that uh, people like to take sides with the different characters. So that's always interesting. Two sisters. About the two sisters. Yeah, which one is right, and it often depends on if you have a sister. <laughs> <laughs> I found. <laughs> do you have a sister? I have. I do have a sister. She always wants me to make sure people understand that the sister in the book is not based on her. You're a writer. You're using your imagination. Yeah. And if you ever met my sister, it would be very clear immediately that <laughs> completely different people. Uh, so yeah, um, book clubs. Um, I'm also taking on clients now for editing and developmental editing. Oh, great. I've been um, fiction in the Arcadia MFA program for a few years now. So I've been working with students on their novels and now I'm taking on um, freelance clients for that too. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're fairly busy. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to stay busy. That's great. Well, thanks for making time to talk to me. Thank you. Happy reading. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.